So neuroplasticity. This is going to be part one of a multi-part series where we get into this important concept to understand if you have tinnitus. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about who is affected with neuroplasticity and we're going to talk about what it is. It sounds like a fancy word, right? It talks about uh, neural neurons, neural the nervous system, it's fairly complex, but we're gonna break it down into a simple, fun presentation for you to take away some key points that you can use in your everyday life related to neuroplasticity. So why does it matter? Why are we learning this framework of neuroplasticity? We're going to learn this frame, framework for a few reasons, and it does matter for us to understand exactly how we got into having bothersome tinnitus and how we're gonna get out of it. So neuroplasticity works both ways, that's what we're gonna explain. And finally, how, for today, how can it help you? That's the golden question, that's why we're talking about it because I know it can help you. And for those of us who have overcome tinnitus, that neuroplasticity has been an important factor of it. So those are what we're gonna to cover today, those four pieces, so let's get into it. Neuroplasticity or neuroplasticity are essentially the same thing and they're both related to our brain. They're both related to our nervous system. This quote by Santiago Ramon says, any man or woman could, if he or, sure, if he or she were so inclined, be the sculptor of their own brain. So the original quote says, any man could, if he were so inclined, be the sculptor of his own brain. Years ago, it was thought that the brain could only be changed during childhood. And once the brain, once the human passed a certain age, the, the brain and the hardware was pretty much set and there wasn't so much changes you could do to the software. And as neuroscience became more and more studied, especially after the year 2000, in the last two decades or so, we started to learn more and more and more about the plasticity of our brain. Specifically that when we practice certain techniques, our brain and the neurological structures and all of the, all of the connecting pieces, all of the neurons, all of the pathways, they can learn a lot more rapidly and successfully than we previously thought. So this quote is important because you, if you are inclined, if you choose to do so and you are guided how, you can sculpt your own brain in the sense that you can create your own new story, new chapter about your tinnitus. You have some control over how you spend your time, how you think, and how you react. That will have an effect on the auditory brain, which is part of the, the source of tinnitus. So I put this quote in here because I know it's really powerful and it's gonna help you, right? So number one, who is affected? So individuals with tinnitus are definitely affected by neuroplasticity and everyone else. Uh, as we just discussed, no matter what age we're at, when we, when we have experiences in life, uh, they have a, an effect on our brain chemistry, they have an effect on our memory, and that affects our behaviors and our actions. So it also affects our psychology and how we think. So if you have tinnitus, you also were affected by the auditory nervous system and the auditory structures of the brain that went through some changes. When we use the term plastic or plasticity, we're essentially referring to changes. And we plastic, sometimes I think plastic, I think of a hard plastic bottle, but of course that plastic can be shape-shifted, that plastic can be molded into any shape. That's why we use plastic because it can hold any amount of liquid that we want, like a plastic water bottle. Similarly, our brains can change and they can mold based on the sculptor or the, the message or the framework or the techniques or the guidance that we're following. So number two for today, what is neuroplasticity? Neuroplasticity is an important thing that you need to understand. So neuroplasticity is actually changes in the networks of the connecting neurons. The one neuron is, is very, very, very small. In one part of the brain, let's say the auditory brain, 
there's many, many, many neurons. And those neurons, they can connect to each other. You can think of this uh, analogy, uh, one neuron is like a person. And each person has different friends, different relationships, different routes we take to get to work. Uh, although the neuron itself isn't moving, it does have these electrical connections in our brain that can connect us to many people. So it's like me, I have my family, friends, people I see around town. Those are, those are my, that's my network. And if I have deeper relationships with certain people, or if I take the same route and take the same roads to work every day, then I'm going to be strengthening those pathways. And similarly, when our brain structures are reacting to stimulus in certain patterns, when those patterns are reinforced more and more and more, those networks become stronger. So just like it's, I can go to work with my eyes half open because I don't have to pay attention, I know the route so well, when certain behaviors are ingrained in us, that becomes second nature. And we don't have to work so hard to make that happen. Now that can be used as a good thing and a bad thing, and we'll get into that in a moment. So harmful neuroplasticity is something that we don't want. And that can be related to negative thinking patterns. Oh, I can't do that. I'm not beautiful enough. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to succeed in that. Um, I, have, I have fear about going out there. Uh, I'm scared. I don't think I can do it. Uh, I'm not smart enough. I'm not worthy enough. Those are examples of negative thinking patterns where if, if we keep telling ourselves that and keep playing that story, keep playing that movie in our mind, those neural pathways and structures get stronger and stronger and stronger. And that would be an example of the plasticity, how we're molding that, we're molding that. It's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Negative self-talk is another one, similarly. If I keep putting myself down, then my nervous system, my brain and my body keeps the message going stronger and stronger and stronger that I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I could never be what they are. Uh, those, those are examples of harmful neuroplasticity. Um, and this can limit our participation. So if I don't show up to my, my exercise group or my sports team, or go on a walk with my friend, then that's 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 also a a, a bad a bad habit or a, a negative a neuroplastic response in our brain where I'm getting more and more comfortable resting in my in my bad habits, which my higher self knows aren't actually good for me, but I'm giving the response to my brain that this is actually what I want to do. So the brain gets more and more comfortable with it, and it can be harder and harder to break out of that. Um, harmful neuroplasticity can also happen when there's a uh, deprivation of sensory input. Think about how most people who have tinnitus have a uh, deprivation of sensory input. Maybe they had prolonged or instantaneous loud noise exposure in their ears and they are then uh, having difficulty hearing potentially or even slight changes to the auditory organ, the sensory organ, the cochlea, can create ringing in the ears in the auditory brain and a lack of input, even if it's very, very little lack of input, high pitch input into the auditory brain, that part of the auditory brain creates the tinnitus, creates the high pitch soft ringing. Sometimes it becomes loud, high pitch ringing, buzzing, roaring, etc. Those are examples of harmful neuroplasticity. On the other side of this, beneficial neuroplasticity can happen when we take positive action, when we're doing things that are in line with our highest self, in line with how we want to live, what we know we're capable of. This can be related to exercise, relationships, uh, work habits, sleep habits, diet. So a beneficial neuroplasticity, uh, a lot of times we use this to our advantage to break bad habits. And another way to say that is to create better habits, to create a more positive lifestyle, a more positive, a more, a more positive quality of life. So this making sense to you guys, because when I started learning about this, I said, yeah, this is exactly what 
I, this is exactly how I've been improving my life sometimes. And this is exactly what happens to me when I uh, go down negative thinking or negative self-talk. This is, it's, it's a neurological change and, and I am the sculptor. I can have some, some adjustment over this. So that's pretty powerful, right? So remember that. And another example of beneficial neuroplasticity is learning. When I'm learning a language, when I'm learning a subject material, when I went through the many difficult years of audiology doctorate program, there's a lot of learning, a lot of step by step, piece by piece, learning new information, integrating it, learning in new ways, writing it, speaking it, listening to it, taking time to integrate it, doing a test for it. There's those different ways of learning a positive skill that, that involves neuroplasticity. Our neurons, when we practice more and more, the network gets stronger and stronger. This, this relates to meditation as well as new skills. Some new, some new skills that I would like to uh, invite into this conversation would be learning an instrument or learning a new language. Those are examples of positive beneficial neuroplasticity. And meditation, a lot of us in this membership, in this community have practiced meditation and I strongly encourage that. I look at it as a reset of the nerve of the neurological system to bring all of the excited neurons and the excited thoughts and everything in the mind and bring it all together into a more calm grounded centered self so meditation it has positive beneficial effects for neuroplasticity all right how's everyone doing everyone's feeling good that's great of course as you guys know we're going to all comment about our response to this video in the Facebook group, the members only Facebook group. So we're gonna do that after the video, but we have two more points here. So why does neuroplasticity matter? All right, so neuroplasticity matters because neuroplasticity is what was involved with causing the tinnitus and neuroplasticity is what created a difficult, a challenging, a negative reaction or response to it. For a lot of you, we've had a negative response to the tinnitus where for obvious reasons it's loud and it's annoying and we don't want it there. And that negative thinking and that negative self-talk and that labeling it as bad or harmful or the reason why I can't be happy, the reason why I can't be joyful, which I've heard from a lot of us. Those are examples of how negative, harmful neuroplasticity can make the tinnitus uh, worse and worse because we're strengthening those negative neurological uh, systems and networks and pathways in our brain. We reinforce that, we reinforce that, and, and that makes it challenging to pull that away but it's, I see it all the time. You can totally do it. That's why we're learning neuroplasticity because we're learning how it may, we may have gone through the harmful neuroplasticity to get to the place of needing help for tinnitus, but now we're going to learn the beneficial neuroplasticity to get us back to our center and back to that place of joy and peace. So step one of why this matters, the methodology is that sem sensory deprivation from the auditory organ, the cochlea, into the auditory brain, step two, and that creates the tinnitus itself. Step three, that, that noise in your body sends a signal to the emotional brain to be on high alert, to check this out, what is that? And then we create this story and we have these, we have a lot of valid questions about what is this? I wanna figure this out because this is, this is different and I need, to, I need to understand this. So then the emotional brain can create stories and then the more and more time that negative thinking or the challenging reaction to the loud, the loud tinnitus, the more and more time we walk down that path in our mind, the more and more it becomes comfortable and it becomes very ingrained in who we are. The next step of this methodology is that the 
negative emotional thinking from the emotional brain, that has a significant effect on our nervous system. And this can put us in a state of high alert. And that is often subconscious. We're not choosing to be on high alert. We're not choosing, you're not choosing to feel stress. You're not choosing to feel anxiety. However, based on this methodology and neuroplasticity in general, that yeah, it's almost inevitable when you have a negative response and you feel threatened by the tinnitus and that gets ingrained more and more and more, then the nervous system as a result is going to go on high alert. So that's the last step of this methodology. All right, number four for today, how can neuroplasticity help you? So there's a lot of research about neuroplasticity and brain science and neuroscience, and especially in the last 20 years, and it's quite fascinating. So I am going to guide you to make sure we use neuroplasticity as a beneficial method, and it's been proven to do so. We're going to focus on mindset with our thoughts and beliefs and how that affects the neurological pathways in our brain and how that has a relationship with the tinnitus itself, as I mentioned. Meditation is one tool that research points to as a great way to relax ourselves, to get us out of these harmful neurological pathways and into a calm, more relaxed self. So an analogy for meditation is that it tunes the brain as an instrument. So if you play the saxophone, I played the saxophone and I know that if my mouthpiece was off, even just a few centimeters, even just one centimeter, if my mouthpiece was off, I played the keys right, but it didn't sound good. So I needed to tune it. Same thing playing a guitar. Someone who's a great guitar player who's trying their best, they can play the guitar, but if the strings are out of tune, it's going to sound very bad. So meditation is one tool to tune the instrument of our brain, to tune our mind. So then from that place, we can play the instrument, we can live, we can take actions that have the highest effect, that are efficient. Our efficient actions come when we take care of our bodies with our health and considering meditation as a way to do that. Another way to increase health and energy is through exercise. So We'll touch on this, of course, uh, here together, and there's plenty of resources that we're going to share about diet, exercise related to health and energy. Uh, another way we'll discuss neuroplasticity is sound therapy. And introducing sound into your ear or, or from your environment can affect the auditory neural response in your brain. So we're going to dive into that as well about how you can consider using sound therapy to have a positive neuroplastic response on our structure of our auditory brain and our tinnitus response. So I say again, any man could, if he were so inclined, be the sculptor of his own brain. Take a moment and read that to yourself. Read this back. Any man could, if he were so inclined, be the sculptor of his own brain. This implies we have power in our actions. We have power in how much value we give to our thoughts. We have power a lot more than we realize about how much power we give to negative reactions or negative thoughts about pain, about our tinnitus, about suffering about feeling feeling a victim because we have tinnitus and some other some other common situations so do you believe that you can use neuroplasticity to improve your life with tinnitus do you believe that you can use these techniques and use the neuroscience and the power of this science behind the auditory reaction, the neuroplasticity, do you believe you can make some positive progress with your tinnitus? I'm seeing a lot of yeses. This response sh should be yes, because I believe you can. 